Hello everyone, welcome to Students Point. This is 9th of July and today we have to see 11 selected questions. Each question today is very important so be attentive and be focused till then. And to get PDF, you can join me on Telegram by writing the channel's name like this, Students Point. You will recognize the channel on the Telegram with this logo there. And if you are finding my videos useful, don't forget to like the video and share the video with your friends and loved ones. Also don't forget to press the subscribe button and bell icon so that you receive all the notifications at the earliest to never miss any opportunity to learn and grow every day with all the latest important videos from this channel. Let's begin now but first you have to answer one question in the comment section. The question is, India's largest tier 4 designed data center was inaugurated at? These are the options. Read the options very carefully then answer it in the comment section. Let's begin now the first question. COGX, a prestigious global leadership summit and festival is related to so it is related to artificial intelligence. So here B is the right answer. And it is held annually in London. And COGX award are given out to the best of the best in artificial intelligence and the emerging technologies across the world. It was in news because India's artificial intelligence in a My Government Goa Help Dex has backed two awards at the Global Leadership Summit and Festival of Artificial Intelligence and Emerging Technology COGX 2020. It was awarded under two categories that was Best Innovation for COVID-19 Society and People's Choice COVID-19 Overall Winner. And My Government is world's largest citizens engagement platform which facilitates two-way communication between government and citizens and facilitates participatory governance in the country. Next question now. One Web. A global communication company is headquartered in, so it is headquartered in London, UK. So yes, is the right answer. It is also headquartered in McLean, Virginia of US. And it was founded by Greg Wheeler with the mission to offer high, high speed, low latency wireless broadband access to billions of people across the globe. And recently, a UK government consortium led by Bharti Enterprises has won the bid to acquire this bankrupt satellite technology company OneWeb. And Bharti's overseas arm Bharti Global would invest $500 million as a part of acquisition with UK putting in a similar amount. And many of you have already enrolled into the monthly current affairs test series and only a few days are left for you to enroll yourself in this monthly current affairs test series. A part of this test series has already been prepared and it will be uploaded within a few days. And rest of the portions will be uploaded after that. And let me remind you, those who are unaware of it and those who have not enrolled yourself yet, that the test will be enrolled or organized into seven subjects, which will be Polity, Economy, International News, Science and Technology, Environment, History and Culture, Miscellaneous, which will include the subtopics of awards, indices, personality based questions, and sports based questions. And if you enroll yourself in this monthly kind of a test series for the month of July, after 15th of July, then I won't be able to take questions for this month because there are limitations of seat and to which I can take questions and answer those all the questions in a separate video. So everyone who want to enroll yourself in this test series, enroll yourself before 15th of this month. After that you can even enroll yourself but after that I won't be available to take your questions. I will be taking questions only of those aspirants who enroll themselves before. 15th of this month because I will have to take all questions together and make a video on that. And there are three subscription plan for this monthly kind of test series that is for one month, three months and six months. For one month it will cost rupees 79 only, for three months it will cost rupees 219, for six months it cost rupees 439 only. And there will be test in seven subjects. Number of questions of each test will differ depending on the important topics in that subjects. And I will also try to find all those related questions which may be applied into general studies as well so that the topic may be covered in a very comprehensive manner for your examination. We'll get the tests very soon and those who have not enrolled, enroll yourself before 15th of this month. And those who have not enrolled, I will share the link in the comment section. Press on that link and subscribe to the test series of your own choice. And it is important that while enrolling, give your active email IDs, the email IDs which are with you and it is active so that I may communicate with you in future. The next question now, which of the following Indian Americans has been named as 2020 Great Immigrants Honorees? They are Raj Chetty 
and Siddharth Mukherjee. So here both B and D is the right answer. So third option is correct. And he is Siddharth and he is Raj Chatti. And Pulitzer Prize winning author and oncologist Siddharth Mukherjee and professor of economics at Harvard University Raj Chatti have been named by the Carnegie Corporation of New York as 2020 Great Immigrants Honorees. Siddharth Mukherjee is a noted biologist, oncologist and the author of several acclaimed books including the Pulitzer Prize winning The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer. So remember this book name and the author as well, very important. The Emperor of All Maladies and A Biography of Cancer written by Siddharth Mukherjee. And Professor Raj Chetty who was born in New Delhi has been one of the youngest professors to be granted tenure in Harvard's history. And they have contributed towards efforts in mitigating the COVID-19 health crisis. Next question now. Consider the following about Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. Under the scheme, financial support of up to rupees 1 lakh crore will be provided as loans through banks and financial institutions in the country to agriculture sector. This statement is correct. Remember this amount, rupees 1 lakh crore will be provided. And the duration of the scheme is for 10 years. That is from financial year 2020-2021 to 2029-2030. So again here both of the statements are correct. So C is the right answer. And this scheme was announced by Union Finance Minister as a part of Rs 20 lakh crore Atm Nirbhay Bharat package. And it is a central sector scheme. And management information system platform will be used for managing and monitoring the agriculture infrastructure fund. And a subsidized rate of interest will be provided to the loans issued under this scheme. And the late rate of interest will be only 3%. However, this 3% interest will be only for loans up to rupees 2 crore, not beyond that. Next question now. The recently held fourth edition of Virtual Ministerial on Climate Action was co-chaired by so it was co-chaired by European Union, China, and Canada. So here D is the right answer. And the participating countries exchanged their views on how they are aligning economic recovery plans amid COVID-19 with the Paris Agreement. Paris Agreement is also called as Conference of Parties or COP21. It was adopted in the year of 2015 to address the climate change. Under the Paris Agreement, countries aimed to reduce global greenhouse emissions in an effort to limit the increase of global temperature by end of the century to well below 2 degrees celsius above the pre-industrial level however if possible countries will try to limit the increase in global temperature below 1.5 degrees celsius however this target seems too optimistic and we are about to miss this target next question now consider the following statements about t cells t cells are a key component of the immune system and they kill infected host cells activate immune cells and regulate the immune response this statement is correct and t cells is a type of lymphocyte which develops in thymus gland this statement is also correct so again c is the right answer and a new study recently has found that even the sickest covid 19 patients produce t cells that help fight the coronavirus next question now consider the following findings of un report on genetic diseases 60% of the known infectious disease in humans and 75% of all emerging infectious diseases are genetic. This statement is correct. The finding of this UN report on genetic diseases has revealed that 60% of all known infectious diseases in humans are genetic. And the report was released on 6th of July 2020 which is observed as World Genesis Day. This statement is also correct. So remember the day. 6th of July is being observed as World Genesis Day. So again here C is the right answer. And genetic disease is a disease that passes into the human population from an animal source directly or through an intermediary species. And genetic infections can be bacterial, viral or parasitic in nature. And the report was published jointly by United Nations Environmental Program and International Livestock Research Institute. The next question now which is the second potential COVID-19 vaccine after Covaxin to get approval of CDSCO that is Center for Drug Standards Control Organization. 
you must have heard the news and we have discussed that news that covaxin vaccine is in the earliest phase of vaccine trial it is being developed by bharat biotech and now another vaccine has got the approval of cdsco for covid-19 the vaccine is named as jicov d so here b is the right answer and the jidas vaccine jicov d has been developed indigenously at the company's vaccine technology center in ahmedabad after completing the pre clinical phase cdso has granted approval to this jidas cad to initiate phase 1 and phase 2 of human clinical trials in india and if you have not liked the video yet do like the video and share the video with your friends and loved ones next question now f1 visas are issued by us government to so f1 visas are issued by us government to full time students in us so here b is the right answer while there is also a kind of visa called as m1 visas these are issued to students who are engaged in vocational or non academic studies recently the visas are news because usa has announced that f1 and m1 visa holders who are planning to take online only models or online only cl classes or courses will not be allowed to stay in us next question now consider the following statements about golden bird wing it has been discovered as india's largest butterfly after 88 years with a wing span of 194 mm this statement is correct so earlier there was a butterfly called as southern bird wing which was reported to be the world's largest butterfly while now it has been reported that golden bird wing is even larger than southern bird wing so here this statement is correct and the female golden bird wing was recorded from didihat in uttarakhand this statement is also correct so again both of the statements are correct so c is the right answer and this is how this bird wing looks like and the only measurement used in the study lepidoptera is wing span in which butterflies are measured from wing base to the tip and lepidoptera is an order of insects that includes butterflies and moths earlier the largest indian butterfly that was recorded in the year of 1932 was a southern bird wing with a wing span of 190 mm next and last question now consider the following statements about marmots it belongs to a squirrel family within order rodentia this statement is correct and marmots are well suited for life in cold environments and have a small fur covered ears short a stocky legs and a strong claws for digging this statement is also correct so again c is the right answer and marmots are diurnal that is they are active during the day and marmots have almost 15 species and the closest living relatives of marmots are ground squirrels and prairie dogs they are found primarily in the continents of europe asia and north america and south west asia is a home to himalayan marmots and long tailed marmot these himalayan marmots and long tailed marmots are categorized as least concerned in iucn red list these marmots were in use because recently reports of an outbreak of bubonic plague in mongolia china and far east russia have emerged caused mainly by tabagan marmot which is a species of marmot we have already been dealt with the question on bubonic plague few days back or i think two days back and the plague is caused by the bacteria yersinia pestis Yersinia pestis causes three types of plague which we have already seen and this Yersinia pestis are usually found in a small mammals and their fleas and please note that Tarban or Mongolian marmot is categorized as endangered in IUCN red list so do share and like the video press the subscribe button and bell icon as well wait for the upcoming video until then stay at your home stay safe and thanks for watching